Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub. This is Mohamed Yakub. I'm back again with more STM32 tutorials. At this tutorial, I'd like to share with you my updated LCD 16x2 software driver for STM32 boards. Um, I've created a driver for this back in 2017, um, and today I'm, I'm updating this driver uh, to solve um, some little common issues faced by users. Uh, and also to add uh, some uh, generic improvements to the driver. Now, let's get started. For people who haven't used this LCD before, let me introduce this LCD display and show you the basics of uh, this uh, LCD display pinouts and wiring. And after that, we're going to get started and open Cubemix to, uh, to set up our project. So, uh, this LCD 16x2 is a quite simple one. It uses a parallel interface and you can see these spinouts. I found this uh, wiring diagram quite helpful for someone who just got started. So what you need to do first when you get this LCD display is that you first connect the VSS to ground, VCC to 5 volt. For the VEE you need to connect this to an analog potentiometer. This to adjust contrast on the LCD. So a common uh, issues faced is that you will turn on the LCD and nothing shows up and that's because contrast is not adjusted properly and that's why you need to uh, play around with this potentiometer to uh, um, to correctly adjust brightness and contrast um, and then for this RW so I've skipped the RS so the RW this is the read write and we often hook this down to uh, ground to activate the right mode um, uh, most of the LCD 16x2 software drivers available on the web don't perform any read operations. That's because, for simplicity, we just write commands to the display. Okay, so RW need to go to ground. Now, for RS and enable, those need to be connected to a digital pin on the microcontroller, as we're going to see when we uh, head to CubeMX. Similarly, for D0 to D7, these are the data lines so when we send commands and data, they get uh, they travel to the LCD with these data lines. For LED plus and LED minus, those for the backlight LED, you connect LED plus to five volt and minus to ground, um, and most likely you will see them marked as A and K on your display. A for anode and K for cathode. So A is equivalent to the plus and K is a minus. All right, I think that's enough introduction. Now let's get started and set up our Cubemx project. In Cubemx, we first select our board. On my demonstration, I'll use the STM04 discovery board. Now while this is loading, this is a uh, the updated Cubemx often update its uh, internal files, and I don't quite like this. Uh, but let me show you a glimpse of the LCD uh, library. So this is the updated library. It might look quite similar to the previous one that I have uh, shared. Uh, so these are the H and C files. Uh, simply, you need to do the initialize of eight bits or four bits, depending on which mode you're using. Um, and then you can clear display, uh, set cursor to a specific location on the display and start printing data. And this printer function is universal. So you can print string, integers and floating points all using the same function and in fact this works in a very similar way that a normal printer function does and here is an example all right now we'll get back to this later now let's carry on with our cubemx on cubemx i am using the uh, f4 discovery board this is uh, one of the most common one but I have tested this LCD driver with an F1 board and it works great too. Uh, I expect this driver to work on all STM boards equally uh, the same. I'm not going to initialize the default modes. I want to set my own pins in the way I like. Now let's wait on for this. Here we go. Uh, the first thing I always like to do is to clear all the pins so that I can set up mine. Um, now for the pins, all we need is to enable digital pins for data and RS and enable. So we have eight data lines and two for control pins. Uh, what I'll do is that I'll set my uh, LCD data lines from D0 to D7 on my SDM board. 
So I'm going to enable PD0 city to output, PD1, PD2, then we skip 1, PD3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All right, and then for my RS, I'm going to do that on PP3. So that's my RS, and that should be my um, enable. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I'm also going to give them a label so that uh, I can refer to them in a very simple way. And the beauty is that when you add a label to a signal on Cubemix, uh, the same label gets used in, um, in main.h file so that you can uh, refer to the pin, not using GBIO pin 3 for instance or GBIO port D, you can just use the label. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to call this D0, referring to our D0 signal on the LCD call this D1 and similarly for those so that we can easily refer to them uh, when we uh, go to the code there and if you uh, stick if you watch my uh, previous tutorials you might already be familiar with what I'm doing here if you haven't just wait a little bit you'll see that uh, when we get to the uh, um, to the IDE All right, excellent. All right, that's everything for pen out. Now, I also can enable the external oscillator to activate maximum clock space, but that's an additional setting. So on my clock configuration, I'm going to use the external oscillator, and I know it's 8 megahertz on my discovery board, and I set the clock to maximum, just so that I can test the LCD display with the maximum clock speed. If it works, then I really expect it to work with lower speeds without any problem. Okay, so that's everything here on the setup. Um, except that I also like to activate uh, a medium speed uh, to ensure my penouts get enough power to function properly. So I'm gonna, with my control, I'm gonna select all of them and uh, set the maximum output speed to uh, medium just so that the GPIO uh, deliver enough power to switch the LCD display on and off. Okay, and that's a common issue. You might find the steam is not powerful enough to uh, control the LCD display. Um, so if that happened to you, you might need to provide a, an external power to the LCD, the same as the uh, control signals. But that's it should work fine with most of the discovery boards that I've tried before. Okay, now. On my project man manager settings, I'm going to select a location to store my project in. Um, and I've prepared a location for this for the tutorial uh, LCD 16 by uh, 2. Sorry, that should go into the project location. And I'll call it LCD 16 by 2 tutorial. Um, and the application structure, I'll keep it basic. My IDE, I'm going to select System Warping for STM32. But with that, you can either export it to Cube IDE or the normal um, uh, System Warping for STM32, the Eclipse space. But it doesn't matter. You can do any. For my for today's demonstration, I'll use the Cube IDE for that. Uh, but I'll keep that the same. You can go and directly select Cube IDE if you want. Um, and for my um, firmware. I don't want to update my firmware, I want to keep the same one, so I'm just going to select 24.2. Uh, uh, and that's it. Let me click on generate uh, source code. Let's retry that, and that worked. Um, so this is going to take a little bit to uh, generate the project files. I expect it to be very quick. Here we go. Um, I already have my project location opened, and that's the one. Um, all you need now is to copy the project path and head to your uh, cube IDE. Uh, you can use any IDE you like. Uh, I am demonstrating with the cube IDE. It's the most common one now and it's a very beautiful IDE. It has so many features that you are uh, most likely going to need. Now that's just converting the project from System Workbench to IDE. Uh, and that's compatible. It works the same way. Um, I'll wait a little bit for that and I think I can already see my project being imported. Excellent. Now, um, the very first thing we're going to do is that I'm going to copy the library files over to my 
project. So these are this is the library H and C files uh, that I'm going to share down in the description of the video so that you can yeah, use them. Uh, I'll copy them to my project. Uh, I'll add a new file, call it LCD 16 by 2. I'll add the uh, driver in here. Uh, and what I need to do first to be able to use them is to head to the project uh, properties. You can either click this or Alt Enter. Uh, I like the Alt Enter, it's a quicker way to access. Um, and then you want to go to C++, uh, C, C++ General and head to Paths and Symbols. And you want to add the path in here. So it's the LCD 16x2 uh, folder that I have uh, created. And additionally, you want to include this as part of the source location so that compiler can add it. And, but this is not displayed here. I think we need to uh, do a refresh in order to see the folder. And here we go. So I can see it now. I head back in source locations. I add LCD 16 by 2. Excellent. So now it's, it has the C uh, mark in the folder, unlike the include, which means uh, it's added as part of the compilation uh, thing in process. Okay. Now let's open the main.c um, and ensure that our main.h has the stm. 32f4 uh, extension include. So if you're using another board, let's say an F1 or an F7, then just ensure that the main.h has this folder. And that's because library rely on the main.h to do that include, as you can see here. All right, now it's uh, quite simple. Now it's very, very easy to use. All you need is to copy the library header file to the main and uh, start using which mode? We're going to start with 8 bits mode. Um, I have uh, already connected my LCD display beforehand, um, so you need to do yours. Ensure you do the connection this way. Uh, the RS goes to our Cubemix um, RS, which is BP4, enabled to PP3, and then D0 to D7 goes to PD0 to PD7 um, uh, sequentially. Okay, and don't forget your power up and ground signals. Okay, um, I'll start with 8 bits mode, so that using all the 8 wires for data, um, I need to call this somewhere after all the initialization is done, and the perfect place for it is bigger number 2. Uh, now, this function takes um, this parameter, it takes the RS and enable port. Uh, now, let me make a very quick comment. The library is designed so that RS and enable are located at the, exactly the same port. Uh, data 0 to data 3 are at the same port 2 and now 4 and 7 are also at a similar port on the STM and port is, is, is uh, referring to either it's port D, port B or port E on the uh, STM MCU okay um, so I can uh, the first parameter is the RS and enable port and uh, if you can recall I've mentioned something about the label as you can see here since I gave my uh, RS and enable pin a, a label, so it's an RS TPIO port instead of me writing TPIO B. Um, so let me use that. So RS TPIO port, and now RS pin and E pin. Okay, that's quite handy because I don't have to uh, type in the, the specific pin. Uh, so RS pin is TPIO pin 3. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just, uh, can just type in the label that I've created in Cubemix. And that's what I mean by, by the label. Now, for my um, data 3, it says uh, data 0 to data 3 has port D, uh, but there's no point I use the label. I can just go and uh, use the port, but I'll do that anyway. So I'll use one of them. So D0 port, D0 GPIO port. And now this needs to be followed by all the pins starting with pin 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so let's uh, do that really quickly. So I've got my D0 pin, then D1 uh, pin, and what I'm doing here, I'm clicking control space to uh, get the O2 character to kick in. Um, and finally, D3 uh, pin. And now we're going to go to the new line, and now that expects the next uh, one, so D3 to D. Uh, D4 to D7 port. I'm going to use D4 uh, GPIO here port. 
uh, and now we start with d4 bin uh, d5 bin d6 and finally d7 and we're done so that's we'll initialize 8-bit mode and now we can just go uh, straight away and write to the LCD display and I mentioned you can use uh, the printf function so LCD printf function to print any type you like so let me start with uh, a normal hello world uh, string okay so let me compile the code first um, I am uh, gonna introduce a little delay to make it really quick so I'm gonna add a delay of one second and then in my while loop I'll keep toggling between line one and two or we'll, we'll do something uh, fun here um, I'm gonna print to the first line so I'll use the function uh, go to first line which will get me to the first line and the zero index um, so we'll start all over again writing from the beginning of the LCD I'll do uh, uh, let's say uh, temperature uh, reading or let's just say temperature and then I go to the second line and I'll display uh, temperature but that's a fake temperature here um, I want to use a floating point um, in, in Eclipse IDE uh, you need to add a uh, floating point flag to your linker in order to uh, use floating point so I want to say the temperature is um, um, is a floating point of two digits and it's in C uh, you, I can just add the temperature here let's say uh, um, 25.789 something uh, but that will be uh, down to two decimal places only because of this uh, point two okay but that's not going to be displayed simply because I need to add a linker flag let me do my delays first so I'll do this in the first line um, and then I'll do that in the second line I'll do another delay and I'll clear the display this will have a nice effect of each line showing separately uh, and then getting cleared and redisplayed again we'll see how that affects uh, appear in the display um, and after clear I'll wait a half a second we're gonna see a nice effect when you look at the LCD display now in order to, to print floating point we need to add the linker uh, linker flag for floating point so I've added that in the library edge file so you can just go there and copy the linker flag um, and head back to the project properties uh, down into so you want to go to build settings tools and um, MCU GCC linker miscellaneous into miscellaneous add this flag printf float and that should activate uh, should tell the linker that we're using floating points so that it should do what it did, what it's uh, good at doing all right so let me compile the project load it to the board and let's have a look together at the board excellent that worked really well now let's activate 4 bits mode now in 4 bits mode you don't have to connect all the 8 wires for data line you, you just need to connect D4 to D7 so I'll switch to 4 bits mode and you see a function there in the library initialize 4 bits uh, so I'll change the number to 4 bits and I don't need this anymore so I'm gonna uh, comment it okay so now just uh, we pass the R's and enable and pins 4 to uh, 7 now let me add something uh, to mark this so 4 bits maybe uh, as part of the temperature thing um, and let's see how that looks like in the LCD uh, uh, display excellent that worked really well and that's it for this video thank you for watching and as always if you found it helpful don't forget to hit like and subscribe thanks see you in the next video